About 800 years ago, around the 13th century, a foreigner from South Sudan was passing through the Benin Kingdom and was captured and labeled a spy. This man confessed to not being a spy and said he was a bronze artisan. The Alba Asaden, Oba Oguola, granted him his freedom and gave him a space to practice his art book. That place today is what we know as Igu. My name is Nancy Okoromi, and come with me, let me show you the beautiful result of that man's artwork. <laughs> A long time ago, before colonialism, there was a great kingdom of the East, a kingdom of indefatigable people, led by an unbroken line of kings known as the Obas. The Benin Kingdom was known for its rich artistic traditions, especially in bronze casting. Its bronze casting was so good that it rivaled all other bronze castings all over the world. In 1897, the invasion caused a total destruction of culture, art, and sovereignty, which led to the looting of over 5,000 artifacts from the Benin Kingdom. Good day, sir. Yeah, good day. Please, can we meet you? Okay. My name is Ewan Wisdom Ibe. I'm a bronze caster. Okay. So I've been into bronze casting for almost 35 years now. I learned the art of bronze casting from my father even when I was in primary school. Wow. So it started a very long time ago too, but I may not be able to tell you precisely the, the time. Almost about around that 12 something. You know? It was an who introduced the art of bronze casting to be near. Some people in history have it that was brought from who were very close to the Yoruba land. Or some people said it started from Benin here too. But I know the Yoruba brought it to Benin and introduced the Indian of the Gun, who was very close to him at that time, as among those people also following him down. And so you know the history of how the Benin and the Yorubas are related, you know? So he brought it to Benin. So the first thing they were doing there, they go to the palace to do the casting. Casting was mainly done in the palace. We never have a festival, have anything you want people to also showcase. Just like when you have a photograph, you have your marriages, you have your burial, you normally take photographs. That was the essence of this bronze workers at that time. You know, the other would tell them, this ceremony, come and design so this, come and do this, come and do this. The people will also do it and they do the casting in the palace. The other always have what normally give to them as compensation. You give them full stuff, you give them beats, you give them those things. That was what he was paying. And so, he also later on he now asked the, the, the head of the geese, who is the Indian of Igu, to come and settle down at Igu area too. He was in Igu too. He had other people too who also introduced to also join him too. Yeah. Like we now we are from the Indian family too, which is the May, uh, uh, the head of the geese. From that family too, we have for the Osa family, we have so many other families, Hanier family, so many other families that make up the bronze casting group in Igu. So they started it and they were doing the work for the Obas at that time. But later on, I was told that they, were, they later moved outside the, the palace, they moved to a place they call forestry now. And so there's a particular area that we have given to them to where they were also doing that casting. But later on, after some time, before enough, freed the chief to go to their various homes and started producing the bronze work. And not date, we are still be doing the bronze work. The method we normally practice here is what we call the lost words method. In other words, it's known as investment casting. The lost word method, you know, we make use of B words, for example, and to produce anything that we want to do. Anything we do, we make use of B words to produce it. So we put the runners there, we reinforce it and all those things. Then we put it on the fire where the words will flow at. So the space be, be occupied by that was. And so immediately the words flow that a vacuum is being created. So that space. It's through that vacuum you are going to pour your motor meter to feed. And so I like to get uh, solid after some time and you break it and so that is that is just the method it's a very simple method mm -hmm. and we use work to design 
Mm. So the wax we used to design. So we remove that wax too through heating. Put on the fire to remove the wax. And that is why they normally call it the lost wax method. My name is Agbe Ayo Endurance. Bronze casting started right from uh, like 12, 12 AD, through the time of uh, Oba Ogola. Yeah. Since then, bronze casting has been in existence till now. You know, they even have a gate. We have a gate you know, that protects, encourages the bronze work that's still going on till now. What challenges do you face as a bronze maker? Like, what are the challenges you all face? There are a lot of challenges that we face, honestly speaking. A lot of it with you, because, you know, I told you my father taught me this art of bronze casting. You know, mm -hmm. I learned it from my father. Mm -hmm. When I was doing it those days, I was very, the, the joy was always in me. I remember I was always making money for me too. It's also encouraged me too. I just do something. Then we, uh, I attend secondary school, I attend primary school there. Sometimes I produce it, I sell it, whether 15 cardboard, I can remember that time. I can buy coke, I can buy so many things that time when I was in school. People look at me as from a very rich home then. <laughs> but now, people are not encouraged. The government is not encouraging me, but nobody's encouraging people. The rate that people leaving this job, the boost hands are leaving this job today. I'm telling you the truth. My people are afraid that this job will not go into a stitch or just like what happened at Ilefe and so many other places too, that we're also uh, producing bronze, bronze work. The cost of materials too. Look at bronze work today. People hardly want to also patronize it locally. I said those white men too. You know, it's so expensive. The ones we use to produce it, people are exporting it outside the country. So to, for us to buy it now, it's very, very difficult for us to buy it because it's so expensive. The bronze, we used to buy it. We even we picked it from the ground those days too. But today now, it's almost about 3,500 for a kilo. So those things we used to sell like 20,000 Today it's almost about 100,000. Wow. How many people can afford it? And if you go around Iguna, you discover that they are not, most of those people selling, most of those people have uh, shops that are selling. Most of them, they don't, most, they, can't, they can't deal on bronze work much as they used to do. They now introduce other uh, materials uh, that they used to produce. Those are fried that they are not as good as bronze work anyway. That is what people can afford, you know? And that's negative to religion belief. You know, here in Africa too, with so much belief, that people doing all those things, they are not Christians. Uh, that is against the doctrine. You know, that's why it's on home too. Even when you have, I remember one time like that, somebody helped me for a job. I said, okay, let me, let me, let me encourage the person. Let me also uh, say thank you to the person. Well, I get to the I get, person. Yes. No, the person was very happy when he received it. After two or three months, I went to that house. I couldn't find that thing. Mm -hmm. But just to discuss with his wife, ah, that thing, I told you people use it to design. What? He said, no, a church member came here. He said, no, we shouldn't try it. <laughs> so we threw them away, you know? So those things are also affecting those things. Mm -hmm. The rate of patronage we normally have before is very, very low. And it's not encouraging people. That's why many people are leaving this job. People that are doing it now, we are very, very few compared to people that were doing it those days. And the good hands, the good hands, I'm telling you, they are all living. What do you have to say to the government, to fellow bronze casters out there, and to the to Nigeria and to everybody out there at large? Yeah, first and foremost, uh, to the bronze casters, I think we have been encouraging ourselves by our own kind of ways. You know, uh, I still encourage, please, with them that to be strong in this. Uh, I call it a fact. You know, we we love we love arts and we. Our culture is synonymous to us very much that we, we want to promote our culture. So we won't say because the government is not really showing is not really showing much concern that we should let it go. We are still very strong. We will just still have to carry these things that we, our father left behind, you know, to make sure we, we begin to produce them on and on. Mm -hmm. If you go to like so many other uh, uh, gig. They are not existing again. Mm. You know, it is only this bronze casting skit that is still existing. Wow. Because we have love, the passions for the artwork. And as for the area of the government, I will want the government to like encourage encouraging the art uh, dealers, that's the art bronze casters, in the sense that in the area of finance, in the area of subsidizing materials. Yeah. Because now that the euro and the dollars are just flying up. Yeah. You see, the materials are going higher. Nice, so for us to get those materials, they are very, very, very expensive. Yeah. 
So if we were producing like five jobs before now, it will reduce to two or one because of the high uh, material increase. So I would want the government to, 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 to show more concerns, you know, to, to have this, these feelings that we have that this is not for only us, it's for the Nigerians, for the other people all over the world. Can you tell us how the British invasion has affected bronze casting in Edo State? When that British invasion came up, most people that were doing those jobs as a dam, uh, like our great grandfather, some of them lost their lives. And the children that were supposed to like carry on, some of them were not really having interest anymore. And uh, the few ones that has interest, uh, they still keep, just keep up the courage and still do what they think is best and what they know. So from there, I think that, that was how we get it from our own father. Yeah.